I wrote a program that solves Sudoku puzzles. Let's see how I did it. Sudokus. Without getting too much into how they originated from 19th century and they became really popular in the 80s and how the name means single digit in Japanese and how there are six sextillion sudokus out there, give or take, that's 21 zeros. Without going into all that, I just want to start with a personal note. I was never into Sudoku up until I started to think about unleashing the power of Python on it. Of course, I knew Sudoku existed. I saw other people, older, younger, in trains, in the subways, at their workplace, just on a bench in the park, anywhere, working through those numbered squares. I, of course, knew the rules of the puzzle, but somehow never picked up solving those puzzles myself. Once a friend of mine gave me a Sudoku to try, I'm not quite sure if I even finished it back then. I don't think I did really. Anyway, here I am, decided it would be an interesting project to take on to write a Sudoku solver in Python. And as I learned more and more about how one goes about solving a Sudoku puzzle, I was more and more amazed at what a rich and exciting world it is. There are numerous solving strategies ranging from trivial to quote-unquote diabolical. I particularly enjoyed creative naming of those strategies. Here are just a few examples. Naked pairs, pointing pairs, hidden triplets, X-wing, coloring, hook, swordfish, jellyfish, 3D medusa. Fish theme is very strong among strategy names because the puzzle is Japanese, so sushi, fish, right? Now let's talk about the setup, where I got Sudoku puzzles for this project and what were some of the ground rules. There's a Sudoku game on Steam that I picked up, the link is in the description, which is called Sudoku Universe. Inside, one would find a set of 225 puzzles. I believe those are a nice representative set of puzzles with great range of difficulty, from rather easy ones to some tough nuts to crack. These 225 puzzles will be my testing set. The goal is to solve them all. As for the solving method, in one of the previous videos I wrote a solver for a kind of Sudoku-like puzzle game, Cross Set. Back then, ignorant as I was, I essentially implemented a couple of primitive solving techniques plus backtracking, which is a type of brute force algorithm. And most of my efforts were dedicated to make that backtracking work in a reasonable time. Now, backtracking is a legitimate solving method, but it is about as elegant as, I don't know, insert something very not elegant. So I decided I will try not to use backtracking slash brute force for as long as I can. I'll try to get down as many puzzles as possible with a solver based on logic and inference. Now let's talk about where I got the solving techniques and how I knew what to do. Well, there are several, not too many really, just a handful methods that I figured out by myself. But mainly I read up on Sudoku solving methods on a website sudokuwiki.org, which is a great resource and it was super helpful in bringing my understanding of Sudokus from zero to say somewhat diabolical. In my video, I will use some of the pictures from sudoku.org. You will probably find my explanation of the strategies a bit too brief and perhaps lacking substance, and you'll be correct. If you're interested in learning nitty gritty of those Sudoku solving techniques and many more others, I highly recommend going to sudokuwiki.org. That is the place to find all the info you ever need. Anyway, Let's get into it. In total, I came up with 10 strategies, 10 being the backtracking slash brute force. These 10 strategies will be applied to a Sudoku puzzle one by one until every puzzle is solved. Let's look at those strategies now. Oh, before we go too deep into this, when you write a Sudoku solver and when you solve it manually too, actually, especially the hard ones, most of the time you're not trying to figure out which number should be here or there. What you actually is doing is to figure out which number should not be here or there. This is what is called candidate elimination. And we start with the most basic, the most obvious, and looking at volume, the most productive strategy, which is called simple elimination. And simple it is. This is how it works. You see, say, a four on the board. So it means there will be no fours in this row, in this column, and in this block. By the way, fancy lingo, rows, columns, and blocks collectively are called houses. 
Eventually you eliminate enough candidates so only one number is left in the cell. This is the number you need. You keep eliminating candidates like this for a few iterations and voila! There's only one value left in each cell, the puzzle is solved. Here is another visual aid to show which Sudokus in Sudoku universe can be solved by which strategy. Here you have all the puzzles, all the packs, all the methods I am going to use and the simple method will give you the solution in 50 puzzles in the Sudoku universe. Most of them are in the easy section of the game, but still, somehow even a couple of puzzles in hard can be solved by simple elimination. Also ninja pack, not as challenging as you might expect from the name. Here's another strategy I figure out all by myself. Hidden single. Not trying to pat myself on the back really, it's a pretty obvious strategy. Here it is, if there's only one instance of a number anywhere in the house, in row, column, or block, no matter if there are other candidates in that cell, this is the solution for that cell, because you have to have at least one of each in each house, right? So this is another powerful technique that will give you the solution to most of the puzzles in the medium difficulty section, and quite a few in the hard pack too. Note how pro pack is totally not impressed. Well, with the number three, I might have slightly bent the rules of no brute force. But let me explain what has happened here. There are a bunch of strategies in Sudoku that eliminate candidates based solely on the content of the house. You don't look to the right, you don't look to the left, you don't scan the puzzle for some tricky patterns. Everything is within those nine cells. These strategies are naked and hidden pairs, triplets, quads. Let me give you an example. So naked pair is when you see two pairs, say one six, one six, and you're like, aha, it's either this one is one and the other is six, or it's the other way around. But at any rate, you can remove one and six from any other cell in this house. Now, hidden candidates, and again, let me explain with a hidden pair example. You have candidates for two numbers limited to two cells in a house, meaning it's gonna be either one or another and the other candidates from those cells can be removed. Triplets and quads follow the same logic, but they're much more difficult to spot really. Anyway, this is where I did cut a corner. You see, the way you can look at this problem is you have a particular set of candidates and you're given a constraint. Each number should appear at least once, but no more than once. You can really treat it as constraint satisfaction problem or CSP, which in turn can be solved by a kind of brute forcing. Just go through all possible permutations, eliminate those that doesn't satisfy the constraints, and then see which candidates are never used or used in all remaining permutations. It doesn't take a lot of time for a program to do it. Resulting strategy is what I called a CSP strategy, and it works great for automatic solver, but for manual solving, obviously, you still need to stick to various naked and hidden siblings. CSP adds 36 more puzzles and brings the total number to 154. The pro packs start showing some cracks and no more cutting corners until the final strategy, I promise. Okay, number four. Intersection. This strategy encompasses a few others known as pointing pairs, pointing triplets, and a line box reduction. Let's look at how it works. Here is a pointing pair. The idea is if you have a pair of candidates in one row, you don't know where exactly the number is going to be, but you know for sure it's going to be in this row. So you can remove these candidates from the rest of the row. Box line reduction is kind of similar, but works in the opposite direction. Those candidates are the last two or three in the row, so you can remove them from the rest of the block. From machine's perspective, it actually makes way more sense if you look at it like this. Here's a line, either a row or a column, and here's a block. Here are cells where they intersect. Now, if there are some candidates in the intersection, purple part, some candidates in the red part, but not in the blue part, you can remove the candidates from the red part. That's it. Now, when you formulate the problem like this, it makes it way, way easier to write code for it. This strategy gave me 12 more solved puzzles, bringing the total number to 166, and the ninja pack is now completely solved. Unlike, by the way, medium difficulty pack that still has a couple of puzzles kicking and screaming. Number five. 
is the famous X-Wing. Actually, it's a subset of one of the strategies that I will have implement later, but I still kept it because it's kind of a famous strategy. It's kind of a neat one too, and most importantly, it's named after a spaceship from Star Wars. How cool is that? Anyway, this is how it works. When you find this four two by two square of cells that look like this, and there are no other such numbers in rows, you can remove those numbers from columns. Or if there are none in columns, go ahead and remove them from rows. From coding perspective, again, it's a pair of rows and a pair of columns. Their intersection and some rules. If intersection has four numbers, one area doesn't have it and another one does, here's your way to eliminate some candidates. X-Wing, apart from being instrumental in the destruction of the Death Star, helped solving 20 further puzzles. Somehow all of them are in the pro pack. So we're halfway into going through strategies and we have 186 out of 255 solved already. Next on the list, strategy called coloring, also known as single chain. The idea of chains and cycles will come up several times in upcoming strategies, so let's look at what it is. If you have only two instances of a number in a row, column or a box, in a house, these two candidates are linked. One can say that they are forming a strong link. Obviously, it's going to be either one or the other one in the end. There are also weak links where you have more than two candidates in a house, but for this particular strategy, it's the strong links we are interested in. If you connect all the strong links of a certain number in a puzzle, you would get a network, a sort of web of links that would spread its little threads, its tentacles throughout the whole puzzle. There's something interesting about the candidates in that web. Since it's always either one or another, they can be split into two groups. Let's call them A and B. And it's either all candidates from group A that will end up in the final solution or all candidates from group B. For convenience, we can color one group in one color and another one in some other color. This is where the name coloring comes from, actually. And this property that is going to be either the whole A or the whole B set allows us to do a few interesting logical conclusions for elimination. For example, if there is a discrepancy within the group, all candidates in the group can be removed. Or if some other off-chain candidate in the puzzle sees both colors at the same time, that off-chain candidate can be removed. This strategy yields only five solved Sudokus, bringing the total to 191. You probably noticed that we are getting into more and more peculiar strategies, but each new one brings fewer and fewer solved puzzles while the code to implement them gets longer and longer and it's going to be even harder from here. Next one is the one called the Y-Wing and it is also where it gets more and more difficult to explain how it works, especially, you know, just by talking about it. So you have to find a kind of pincers of specially arranged three pairs of different numbers to, to eliminate a candidate that happens to be in rather precise position that lies exactly at the intersection between pincers tips. Sorry for this explanation. Again, I'd like to refer you to sodokuwiki.org if you want to learn about strategies in more details. One more thing, same as X-Wing is a subcase of another larger strategy, so is the Y-Wing. But I kept it nonetheless, because hey, it's almost as cool as X-Wing isn't it? Y-Wing brings home three, count them one to three solve puzzles. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. <sighs> but we are getting closer and closer to the grand finale with a total of 194 Sudokus under our belt. Next one, X Cycles. All right, remember those weak links we were talking about? Now is the time to use them. Similar to simple coloring, we construct the net of links, but this time using both strong and weak links. And they should go like strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, and so on. Also, it should be a loop, not just an octopus of random links. There are a few rules you can use to eliminate candidates using X cycles, some of which are similar to coloring and some of them are new. For example, if you can construct a loop with two hard or two weak links in a row, you can either remove or keep certain candidates. I must admit, it was a great mental exercise to code these things, but honestly, I don't see how one can realistically use these strategies with like pen and paper puzzles. Seriously, those people are, must be like rain men, like rain people. One quick note, X-Wing is actually a subcase of X-Cycles, and so is Swordfish. 
Another one famous strategy that you can find in those how to solve hard sudoku guides. X cycles cracks open 10 more sudokus and as we approach our last non-brute force strategy we have 204 solved puzzles. And the last non-brute force strategy is called 3D Medusa. I think Y-Wing is actually a subcase of 3D Medusa, not sure. It is probably my favorite of all the tough and diabolical strategies out there, as the logic here is pretty simple really. What you do in 3D Medusa is very much the same thing you did in simple coloring, with one small but essential exception. If in simple coloring you just look at one number at a time, here you look at all numbers at the same time. Hence 3D, because your octopus of links rises above the piece of paper. To do that you just consider cells with two candidates strong links, which they certainly are if you think about it. There are six rules you can use to eliminate candidates once you build the chain. I'm not going to go through all of them. We better just think in awe about people who actually came up with all these rules. It's unbelievable. So this monstrosity gave us final nine puzzles solved using facts and logic, bringing the total to 213, almost 95% of the set we started out to solve. Anyway, that was the moment when I said, now I'm ready. Brute force. Or sometimes you can also hear the word backtracking. Generally it's not exactly the same, backtracking is a type of brute force method, but in our case you can consider them the same thing. This is how it works. You go through the puzzle and whenever you see an unsolved cell, you try using different numbers on it. For each number you try, you go to the next unsolved cell and try all possible numbers there. And then again for each number there, you go and try to pick a number for a further cell. And you keep repeating this until you find the combination that actually works. Obviously this is not a feasible approach for a human. You'd need to make several thousands, if not millions, attempts until you find the solution. Machine, on the other hand, has no problem with this method and gets the solution in a matter of seconds, or even fraction of a second. And this is exactly how the remaining 12 sudokus were solved. So here you have it, all 225 puzzles in the game were solved. Just open the game, push the button and Python will do everything. Read the puzzle, run all those strategies, punch in the solution numbers. And if you think about it, it will probably have that great feeling of solving a difficult puzzle too, instead of you. Well, you can have it all, can you? And with that, I'd like to end this video about my encounter with Sudokus. Link to the source code of the solver is in the description. So is the link to the Steam page of the game. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like and subscribe for some more game crushing with Python. See you next time. Bye.